Praise the Lord. He's worthy, isn't he? Amen. Let's give him another hand clap. Because he's worthy, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our God is worthy. There's nothing that Jesus does that's not good. There's nothing that he does that's not good. Everything he does is good. Amen? Uh, the last time I uh, shared, uh, you know, some of you know I had, I had a little incident, but I, I was a little weak. But I told the pastor, I says, Pastor, I says, you know, I'm a little weak. And the enemy comes and attacks the body. But my spirit is very strong. Amen? Amen. Sister Dora, you hear that? My spirit is very strong. No matter what we go through with our bodies, the spirit must remain strong. Amen? Amen. Greet me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for who you are. We give you all glory and honor, Lord, and we just thank you and praise you for what you've done for us, what you've done for your people, Lord. We ask for your anointing tonight to fall down on us. Speak to our hearts. If there's anything within our spirits that is not of you, we ask you to remove now that we may be in the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you can have your way tonight. Lord, we need to hear from you. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Feed our spirits, Lord, for we thank you and we praise you. And we do bind Satan, all of his principalities, and evil spirits. Anything that may come against the people, anything that come against your word, we bind and cast out that we may be free, Lord. Free to accept you, Lord. Free to hear from you. Free to receive fresh revelation from you tonight, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. We thank you for your anointing, for the anointing breaks the yokes. And we thank you and praise you, Lord. Give me the words to say, Lord. Only those that you have me to say, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. He's worthy, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to share tonight, uh, and uh, some of the men may hear a little bit of this. It may be going over a little bit there. Brother John, we had a uh, uh, kingdom men in action on Monday. And I stayed back, and I was praying. And when I was praying... Uh, there was a scripture downstairs in the room, downstairs in the Sunday school room. And it was ministering to my heart. And then I look up and then I seen it up on the wall of how what the Lord was ministering to me about. And I shared it with the men. And I was going to just let it go at that. But the more and more I read, see, when the Lord gives you a word, go to the word of God and seek out that word. Because he may have some more in it for you. There might be some more food at the table for you to eat. Amen? So if you do get a word, expound on that word. Just don't take the word and just let it go. And if you get it, write it down so the enemy don't try to take it away from you. Amen? Write it down. So he don't try to take it away from you. One thing that I did get out of that was ministers. We all are ministers. Sister Dora, you, can you hear me? You can hear me? Well, God has something for you to do. You're just not a disciple, but you are a minister in Christ. We all are ministers. That we have to minister the word of God to the world. We all have a job to do. I want to read a definition of disciple, of a disciple. And then I want to read a definition of a minister. It's two, they're different. A disciple, this is, out of, this is out of the Webster. A disciple is a personal follower of Jesus' life. Those disciples, and that's us. That we follow Jesus' life. The other part of that definition is a follower or student of a teacher, a leader, a philosopher. We don't philosophize. We don't need that. Because we have the truth. A philosopher comes up with things. Maybe it happens this way. Or what he feels. But the word of God is the word of God. It is the truth. There is no negotiating the word of God. What God says 
is good. And it's the truth. The minister, the definition of a minister, tend to, care for, take of, a minister to, to help and to assist. So now, if we are disciples, which is a follower of Jesus Christ, a follower of a teacher that we have taught by Jesus Christ, do we stop there? You can't stop there. I'm a disciple. So a disciple is sitting up up to somebody who's learning. But a minister is somebody who's applying that discipleship that we have to minister to. And we minister to the world. Amen? The Divine Commission, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. That's our commission. That's what he commissioned the disciples to do. And then when they went out into the world, and they were disciples, they went and they became ministers. Ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we are called to do. We are called to do that. And do not let anyone stop you from ministering the word of God. Because that is the divine commission. We are, if somebody stops you, the enemy, somebody in the family, somebody in the world, stop you from ministering the word of God, we are not doing the divine commission what he commissioned us to do. Amen? Amen. Now, let's get to the scripture. 1 Timothy 4. 4 through 6. We're going to read that. And this is the scripture that the Lord was ministering to me with whenever I was praying on that Monday night. And as you turn there, as we go there, I just want to give you an example of what was happening here. We had a testimony of one of the men came back and they said, there was a lady that was in the neighborhood and she seen us what we were doing. And they were out there sharing a word, ministering the word of God. And she said to them, it's good what you guys are doing. She said, it's good. Yeah, it's good. And it is good. But that good that she's seen in them, what she was seeing was Jesus Christ working through them. And that's what they should see in us as we minister the word of God. It's not us, but Christ in us. But Christ in us. Amen? Let's read these scriptures. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 4 through 6. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, if it be received in the right way. For it is sanctified by what? The word of God. And what? prayer. So what we do for God, it's sanctified by his word and through prayer. Do you know in John 17, Jesus prayed and he wasn't praying just for himself. He was praying for those who belong to him, who Christ gave him. And that was us. He was praying for everyone who believed the Father to make us one. Amen? That's who he was praying for. So when we go and we witness, when we go and we witness to our family members, and we go and we be that example, standing strong in the Spirit of God, who do they see? They see us. And what are we? We are ministers. And what are we doing? The divine commission. That's what we're doing. Verse 6, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things that shall be 
a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith, of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. If you do the will of God and minister to people and point things out to them, you are a good minister in God's eyesight. You will reap the harvest. Amen? Do what he tells you to do. Be a good minister. Amen? Same, same, same chapter. 1 Timothy, we're going to skip down to uh, verse 10. 1 Timothy 4, verse 10 to 12. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. We do that. We do that. We labor and suffer reproach. Those men, the kingdom men in action that goes out into the neighborhood, they suffer and there is reproach. There is, is that right, Brother Chuck? Did you get reproach? Some people accept it. Some people didn't. Some people didn't. Eleven. These things command and what? Teach. These things command and teach. In verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of who? Believers. In word and conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. In purity. That's what we have to be as ministers. Amen? It's qualification. Qualification. He's talking about pastors here, but we are not pastors. Everybody is not called to be a pastor. And I'm not called to be a pastor. I pray for pastors, though. I definitely pray for pastors. And that's our jobs. Pray for pastors. But we are ministers. Amen? We are ministers. Same chapter. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctor. Continue in them. For doing this, what shall happen here? Thou shalt both save what? Thyselves and who? And those who hear thee. I like that. I like that. I'm not just saving myself. But those who hear me, because of the blood that he shed on Calvary, because of the power of the Holy Spirit that's within us, Others can be saved. Others can be saved. Speak the word. Don't let no one shut you up. No one. Be bold. If God has something for you to say to someone, say it. Say it. Live it. Live the word. That's what he's saying here. Live it. Be pure. Amen? Be pure. That's what he wants us to do as ministers. As ministers. Now, like always, I always try to have an example of what the Lord gives me here. And I picked out an example of two men who showed that they were ministers. They were disciples. They were up under Jesus. And they turned and they went into ministers. Amen? They lived their life. People see them. They see them who they were. They see us who we are. We just can't talk. Our words, the words, what is the scripture in the Bible? Our words should line up with our deeds. 
Amen? In Acts 3, if you have your Bibles, turn there in Acts 3. And it was because of Jesus what these men were able to do in Acts 3. We're going to read from Acts 3, verse 1 through 13. Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. What were they going there to do? They were going there to pray. And if you will minister, one of the qualifications that is said in that one scripture was we were sanctified by the word of God and what? Prayer. If you don't pray and you don't have a prayer life, get one. Because this is the qualification of a minister. That he or she should pray. So they went up there to pray in the ninth hour. In number two it says, And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to the alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. If he was at that gate, I don't believe that this was the first time he seen Peter and John. This is me. I don't believe it was the first time that he seen them. And in verse 4 it says, And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. He says, Look, look. When you, when you minister to somebody, right, when you speak to somebody, have them look at you. Have them look at you. Get their attention. Don't be ashamed. Don't talk with your eyes down and your head down. We represent Jesus Christ. Amen. We are ministers of Jesus Christ. We have to take a stand and let the world know that we are not ashamed of the gospel. Get their attention. Whether they accept what you are saying or not, when they leave there, they know where you stand. Just like the song that we sung. You will know where we stand. Amen? And in verse 5, it says, And he gave unto them, expecting me to receive of, of them. He thought he was going to receive alms. He thought he was going to get some money. Receive some alms or something. And then, guess what? When folks gave him alms, this is what I believe. When they gave them alms, or gave him alms, that was it. The deal was done. There was no communication, no more after that. So if you receive, if, what's the scripture? If a man profit whatever in this world and lose a soul, so what? That's not important. But his soul is what's important. That's what we're about. We are not about the present. We are about the future of eternity. That's what we're about. That's what Christ is about. Not right now. Not now. In verse 6 it says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such I have I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, <laughs> walking and leaping and praising God. Now I want you to check this out. <laughs> you can't miss this here. Here's a man, here's people went in that temple, walk past me, right? He's lame. And they're in the temple. And so Peter and John heals him. Next thing you know, the guy's walking in the temple side by side, probably right in the middle of Peter and John. 
rejoicing and walking. <laughs> what, 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 I mean, that had to catch your attention, amen? I mean, he's walking in there, leaping. Look what it says in 9. He says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they all knew that it was he that sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement that had happened to him. They were amazed. They were happy for him. But I guarantee you they wanted to know, how did it happen? <laughs> they wanted to know, how did this happen? In verse 11 it says, And as the lame man which was hit, which healed held Peter and John, and all the people ran unto them, in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondered. Well, he got a crowd then, didn't he? Didn't he get a crowd? Didn't he get a crowd? You know what? That's what we want. We want a crowd. We want a crowd. We want people to flock around us. Amen. We want people to wonder just what kind of person you are. Why are you so happy? We want, we want people to wonder and think, you know, we, how did you get healed? Why are all your needs met? Why isn't this world getting you down? We want them to wonder. You know why? So we can tell them. <laughs> so we can tell them why. We want that to happen. We are peculiar. But we're chosen. Amen? Peculiar, but we're chosen. <laughs> okay, verse 12. And when Peter saw it, this is, this is why we want the crowd. We want everybody to pay attention. Come around. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel at this? What are you marveling at this for? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though it was our own power or holiness? We have made this man walk. What are you looking at us for? What are you looking at us for? Peter and John, the Lord set them up with a perfect situation to minister. A perfect situation to minister the word of God. And who do they give credit to? The Lord. Gave credit to the Lord. Here's what he says, 13. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our Father, has glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up. He's getting up. Whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. When he wanted to let him go. But he told them, it wasn't me and John. It wasn't me and John who did this, but it was Jesus, the one who died for us, the one whom you had helped crucified. That's who it was. That's who it was. But let's take a look at these two, though. I'm going to go back just a little bit here. You don't have to turn there. I want to go back here to Timothy 6. It said this, I'm sorry, 16. Take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine, continue in them for doing this, for doing what Peter and John did, both shall save thyself and them that hear thee. And there was a lot of people who heard them, a lot of people who saw them, amen, who saw them ministering to the lame man. I want to tell you. At that moment, they weren't disciples. They were disciples. But at that moment, when they were ministering to him and telling him, silver and gold, I don't have it. I don't have that. But I do have the healing of our Lord and Savior. They were ministering then. You are a minister. You're a minister. That's what they did. 
They were ministers. And they did the will of God. They did the will of God. Just about ready to close. Why don't you turn to Psalms 103 if you have your Bible. We're going to read verses 18 through 22. If you have time. In fact, I got to read. I have to read this. I, I, I have to read this. I felt led to read this. Uh, just go to the next Psalm, 104. 104. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. And we're going to read down to verse 4. I want to tell you. When I didn't know and fully understand about the word of God. When I was in a state of mind where I let the devil push me around, take advantage of me because of lack of knowledge. When I was in that state and the enemy had control over me, he had dominion over me. But the word says he no longer has dominion over us. We have dominion over him. See, it was the other way around. But then when I started learning more and more about what Christ did on the cross and why and the power and authority that he has given me, then things turned around then I start running the devil away. Amen? Let's read here. This is so, if you get a chance, you have to read 103 and 104. But we're just going to read a little bit of 104. It, I mean, it bless me. It says, bless the Lord on my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majestic, who covers thyself with light as a garment, who stretches out the heaven like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in waters, who maketh the clouds of his, his chariots, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers with flaming fire. That got me up. That did something in my spirit. Amen? Because now that he made me a minister of his word, and that's what we are ministers of, not ministers of something in the world. There's ministrations, there's ministers of some other stuff, but we're ministers of God. Amen? That's what we are. Okay. I don't have time to read all of 104, but you should read it. It'll bless your heart. Amen. But let's turn to 103, and we're going to read verses 18 through 22. And we're going to close with these verses. We'll close with these verses. It says, To such as kept his covenant, to those that remember his commandments to them, the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth all over, over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, and exceed in his strength, that do his commandments. Hearken unto the voice of the word. Now, before I go here, and I meant to uh, uh, bring this up here. The voice of, which is, is anybody in today's service? Was anybody in today's service? Huh? And then what we talk about? The voice of God. Amen? And we hear the voice of God. But when we minister, we're not hearing the, verse of, uh, the, 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 the voice of God. Because we have already heard the, verse of, uh, the voice of God. You've already heard it. Now what you are doing is, you are applying what you have heard now. What God has said to you, the, that's what you are going to minister. So whenever I find, whenever a pastor was like ministering that word, I'm saying, okay, the voice of God. I hear the voice of God. 
And now I heard the voice of God like John and Peter heard the voice of God, the voice of God, whenever they ministered to the lame person. So they heard it and they applied it. Amen? They applied it. Verse 21. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his host, ye ministers of his, that do what? His pleasure. We are ministers, and we have to do his pleasures. We do what the Lord tells us to do. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord on my soul. Amen? Amen. So that's what we must do. We have to do the will of God. Be ministers. Amen? Amen. I do want to close, though, with that song. Uh, Bless the Lord on my soul. Can everybody stand? Pastor, you might have to help me out here. I'm going to do the best I can here. Bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name for the Lord. done for he has done great things he has done great things and he has done great things bless his holy name Bless the Lord, on oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for your word. We give you all praise, glory, and honor, Lord. Thank you for ministering to us, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen us, Lord, that we can be ministers of your word, Lord. That, Lord, that we can live as examples unto you, Lord. That our light might shine, Lord. That, Lord, we will not hide our lights up under a bushel, Lord. That it will shine for your glory, Lord. That you receive glory and honor in Jesus' name. We thank you. We glorify you tonight, Lord. We ask that you will go before your people, Lord, and we lift you up and we magnify you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen.